I'm on with him. I don't see him. I don't see him. guys welcome welcome to another vlog on my channel another travel vlog yes i am still in cape coast <laughs> i'm still in cape coast okay so this is like part two of like my cape coast vlog yeah but ghana so far has been great um, i'm having a good time here i love the fact that the reaction i'm getting to my content is actually good well at least on youtube instagram i would say you know you know, we still need to pick up there a little bit. But yeah, I'm so excited today. I have a new vlog going up today. The Kwehu vlog part 2 is going up today and I'm super excited. But yeah, let's go to my activities for today. So today I'm going to a castle here in Cape Coast. So the castles are actually where um, um, the white people that colonized um, Ghanaians kept like slaves before shipping them off. So we're going there. Hopefully we can get a tour of the place. But I will take you guys along with me. So far, Cape Coast has been beautiful. I think my biggest struggle here will just be the network. Um, other than that, I absolutely like how things have been here in Cape Coast. It's not like a bubbling, bubbling city like Lagos is. Yep. Um, but, you know, it has that. It has the beaches. It has, like, nice places for you to chill. So, I absolutely like that side of Cape Coast. Yeah, so um, that's enough chit chat. Okay, let me go. Let's have a good time today. Um, get a tour, see what it was like um, for the slaves in those days. Yep, let's go. Guys, so I didn't talk about my outfit. So my dress is actually tailored. Um, it's like a backless dress. I love it. It's perfect for the weather. My hair that I absolutely love, like it's giving golden girl to be honest this is from chs underscore hair of course links to the page will pop up all right and my scent for the day is this um kiali perfume my camera are you focusing on it yes you are this kiali perfume so this is what i'm using today i actually need something strong something very strong yep so let's hit the road when the lights are on my own starts in about 15 minutes so we just want to like get pictures around here like just enjoy like the view that we have here and we have oceans just over there so we want to take pictures there and you know just start our tour to my sister and just start our own tour a little bit but the place looks big there are like different groups for the tour so they are grouping us so that's why ours is taking time to start so when you come they group you and then you begin your tour yeah for I'm ready to see what really went down here years ago. Yeah.
seen the dungeon, but before we move in, let me give a very short history about this castle. This is a British built slave castle. Uh, it was built in 1665. But the British, they were not the first Europeans to have built on the land. The Swedish were the first year in 1654. The Swedish built a fort over here, and they were using this fort to take gold and Africans away. But the fort and the land changed hands between three other European countries. In 1658, the Danes captured the fort from the Swedish. The Danes were here for three years. Around 1661, the Dutch also came around. In those days, there were Africans captured in neighboring countries like Burkina Faso, Togo, and brought here. And many of these Africans were prisoners of the intertribal wars that happened in those days. There were also people who were kidnapped randomly from their villages by slave raiders. And one thing, wherever the Africans were captured, they were marched on foot, they walk. So you can imagine walking from even Accra to this place, it's a long journey. Not to talk about Burkina Faso, all the way down here. So there were, there were many Africans who died being marched to the castle, those who survived the walk. They were brought here by the slave raiders and the middlemen to be sold or auctioned to the British. But the trading system was the butter trade. trade. So the British were using the guns, textile, tobacco, alcoholic drinks to exchange for the Africans. And after they get the Africans from the middlemen, what they did was they branded them. They had a branded irons with their company's names or emblems carved out at the top to fire the branding on the arms or the backs of the Africans. And this was done for easy identification. From there, they will separate them. This dungeon, it was designed to hold as many as 1,000 men. And they had a separate dungeon where they were keeping the women and children. Let us now walk down into the male dungeon. The floor part of it is slippery. So watch your steps.
the ancestors, the Africans in the community had the shrine on the land. So the land was sacred ground for the local people. But when the land was occupied by the Europeans, they prevented the Africans in the town from having access. The Swedish were here, the Danes, the Dutch, and the British. It's an underground tunnel, a tunnel built to connect this chamber to the sea, about 70 meters long. The British, they were using the tunnel as a passage. During the slave trade, whenever the slave ships arrived at the beach, the men in the dungeon, they were not taken out through the main door of the ships. The soldiers rather walk or move the men through the underground tunnel, still in the chains, all the way to the beach. At the beach, they put them to boats. The boats take them to the ships from the sea before they are taken to the Americas and the Caribbean to be enslaved on the plantation farms and never to return home to their mothers. In 1833, the British blocked or closed the entrance to the tunnel, supposedly to symbolize the end of slavery in British colonies. When we continue out, I will show you parts of the underground tunnel. And the corner over there, it is just an extension, it's part of this chamber, so there is no door or exit on that side. Now we see a lot of reed here. These are brought by visitors to remember and pay homage to the enslaved Africans. The worship up there. While the Africans are down. We now use the place as a children's library. Uh, let's walk look at the other This was put there in 1992 by the National House of Chiefs, the traditional chiefs in Ghana. They came here to acknowledge that there were some African chains who were involved in the slave trade. They were here to apologize, to say they are sorry for what their predecessors did. And also to advise us, humanity, to learn from all this and to make the world a better place for all of us. So 1992, that was when this was put in by the chiefs. So the African here, his name, Kweku, so born on a Wednesday. Kweku was born in the town in 1741. His father was a middleman. The father used to bring people here to auction to the British. When he was just about 11 years old, the British convened the father and they took Kweku to England. In England, he became an Anglican priest, the first black man to be ordained one. After becoming a, a priest around 1765, the British brought him back. And when he came back, he had a new name. In England, he was baptized, given the name Philip. And over there, they were mispronouncing his original name. Kweku sounded as Papa. So the name changed from Kweku to Philip Papa. And during the slave trade, they used him. He stayed here preaching Christianity in Cape Coast. They also used him to promote Western education. So the oldest primary school in Ghana was named after him, the Philip Papa Boys School. He died in 1816, 75 years old, buried right here. He's a, a native of the town. All right, so the water reservoir, uh, two of them, the other one there, failed to store rainwater. And they were used, yeah, be, if it goes down. <laughs> 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 they were using the rainwater to cook for the Africans, the dungeons. That is what they gave them to drink after eating. But now connected to the pipes. So these days we store pipe water. Let's see if it's Okay. Hmm. Don't you like this new phone is scratching you? Okay, that's deep. 
watching as they walk. So after closing the exit, what they did was that they created another exit because they were still taking Africa. The other exit created a downward. And that is what we call the door of no return. Okay. It is still open, so we will be walking out. We <laughs> kept the woman down there, but the woman who resisted rape by David's wife, the woman who were fighting for their freedom, beaten, locked in this space. As many as ten women, were there. the outlet for toilet and urine, and they would keep a woman in for about one week. While staying, she is giving food one day. Eat from the pound. So the idea to starve the woman to try and break her. But the next time she will be submissive or she will use the gift. There were children as young as six years kids in the farms in here. And uh, three veins for life. And uh, the window over there, there were iron bars fixed. So no one could see through. A toilet, urine, menstruation, everything was done. The stayed mm. next. They were eating two times from the palms. And they stayed in here for two weeks to three months. Many women and children died. When one dies, they carry the body out and throw the body to the Later, it's this big one. The name is symbolic. Uh, these were all African, just like you and I. When no one came here willingly, they were forced here. When they were taken away to the US, Jamaica, Barbados, all these unknown places, they lost contact with everything. And over there, they lost their freedom, they lost their names, their languages. They were enslaved on the farms to profit the Europeans. And never did these Africans return home to their motherland, Africa. assumed from the grapes and the bones were brought to Ghana. An African-American, his name Samuel Kassan, and a Jamaican woman, her name Madame Krista. And when the bones were brought to Ghana, they were brought to this castle not by road, but by sea, on a boat. They were taken in through this door. And at the court, yeah, the complete traditional food was done for the two. The bones were later reburied in a town in Ghana known as Asen Mansu. That town was a major slave route. So after all that was done, this was then put there, the door of return. So it is very symbolic. There were millions of Africans taken away. Not only through this door, and not only through the shores of Ghana, but all over West Africa. And these Africans taken away never returned home. But the bones that were brought back symbolically broke the barrier. So this same door, it is now a symbolic gateway back to Africa. So to our brothers and sisters on the other side, the African American, Jamaican, we are saying they can't and they should return home. Except. Okay. Gotta bend. Ah. There were three doors fixed at the entrance. Before they put the male captive here, it's beaten, so it's put in here weak. When it's put in here, all three doors are closed. No food, no water, no air. He stays until he dies. <laughs> so over here was a condemned cell. The idea was to kill the African, but they want him to die slowly and painfully. They killed him to set an example. Right. That's it. It's a mansion. <laughs> Guys, I literally have to pause to catch my breath. Like, I'm already my I don't see, my I don't see, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but like we're going up to check the governor's room now i had to catch my breath because that cell was a cell like and i'm very claustrophobic so i can't breathe well in closed spaces and i was there for just a few seconds so i can't imagine people that were there for days 
I feel die. Front house. Man, this man had a view. He was chilling. He had a view. guys so this is the end of the tour we are done touring the place like wow i really can't believe that people went through that like people like me with my skin color actually went through that um <sighs> bro it's really it's something else but you know i'm glad i was able to um have this experience while i'm still in cape coast the only time i've had any experience close to like slave trade was when i went to badagri yeah when i went to badagri for like school excursion it wasn't so deep then yeah but like this place is something else like you guys if you're ever in cape coast make sure to visit this castle okay make sure to visit there's also another castle at elmina so you can also check out that one too yep so pretty much the end of my journey here see you guys later Good morning how are we today today is wednesday the 27th of april yeah so today <laughs> i actually wanted to stay at home today because like my star has like some people coming to the place to do some things and i said okay i'm going to stay at home but but i started having some you know when you're just alone by yourself and you just start overthinking and i was just thinking about a lot of things and my mood was getting down and i'm like that nope we don't have this energy here okay so i'm stepping out today um i'm actually my first assignment stepping out is to find puff puff i don't know how where whom but all i know is that i'm gonna find puff puff my star told me that there's someone that sells like just down the main road here so i want to go there and check if they are still selling puff puff by this time this is almost 11 i think okay this is already past 11 <laughs> sorry <laughs> but i want to find pop up i think here they call it my sister said they call it born fruit something of that nature or that pronunciation i'm not sure if i got it right or if she still even got it right <laughs> but um there's a woman selling the born fruit somewhere around here so that's one assignment for today i also want to go back to Melcom to buy some things for the house i actually feel like cooking today so um let me i don't actually just feel like making chicken i saw one chicken recipe like when i woke up and i'm like okay let's actually try and create so that's what i want to do today guys do not judge me okay so i'm trying to call the taxi guy that i use but his number is not going through so i just might have to walk down and find one by myself um i've not used my sunscreen so this is what i'm going to be using 
I'm I'm switching between this Misha one and the one from Skin Science. So the one from Skin Science, I like it because that's the one I said was making me oily. But I like the way it makes me look oily, especially uh, for beach days. So I have like this very dewy look, okay? But this one is pretty simple. So I don't have like a white cast with it. It's just like plain. So I'm just going to use this one. Okie dokie. Ah, so. Huh. You guys, I'm going to use mirror to rub this thing in very well. Before I go out looking like a ghost, literally. Cool. Okay. I think this is fine. This is fine enough. Yesterday I went out without my sunscreen and um, I didn't even realize until I got to the car and I was so confident that my sunscreen was in the bag. So I'm like, okay, I'll just use it in the car. But bro, my sunscreen was at home. So I went to stay without sunscreen. So I'm really trying not to do that anymore because the sun in Ghana here is something else. Like it's biting. That's the word to use. It's actually biting. <laughs> so let me be on my way out. What am I wearing today? I have this... Um, Body suit. It's actually body suit. I got this from Deborah's Grace. My wig. I'm still loving how straight this thing is. Like the cut is pretty. I like the color. Brown hair has always been for me. I think so. And then I'm wearing the Ankara shorts that I got yesterday. So this shorts I got yesterday. I'm going to wear my black slippers. I like the shorts. They're actually very big. Like I love. So that's what I have to wear today. Where are my slippers? Okay, they're over here. I'm going to wear my slippers and let's be. On our way. I know I left my MacBook. My phone keeps reminding me every time I go away from my MacBook that I left my MacBook. Right? Thank you. But will you be able to park? I swear, so don't waste time, baby, my rush, yeah, oh, yeah. Cause if it's here or not, it'll be you out there What I can breathe in my mind, I can freeze, get out of love I don't wanna hear you say, I don't wanna hear you say You're there with another man, your body rotate I know but like I'm if I see with another man I don't wanna hear you say I don't wanna hear you say you're there with another man Your body rotate, yeah Cause I don't wanna say you ain't nobody, 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 oh yeah I don't wanna say you ain't nobody, 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 oh yeah Okay, give me one second, so make it everything possible I don't wanna hear you say you're there with another man. Okay, so this one is fine. Body rotate. Okay. No one like I'm okay. if I see with another man. I don't wanna fine. hear you say. I don't wanna hear you say you're there with another man. Your body rotate. 
Hey guys, so I'm home now and everything I wanted I got. I got my Popo Bon Fruits. Like it's so big here. I got one for one CD and that's about 18 naira. So it's actually I would say it's worth the size if I'm judging by what we get in Nigeria. Yep, yeah, um, so I got other things to use to cook, but that'll honestly be later today. Like I'll make it for dinner because my sister doesn't come back from work till about 8 p.m. So probably that's what she's going to eat right now. Let's actually try this. So I don't know. It's giving if it, it feels more like buns than puff puff in Eurasia, but it's it's sure like really soft, so it's pressable. Yeah. So hmm. don't you just taste like puff puff to be honest? But I feel like it has more filling than puff puff. Like so. If I take like two of these, I'll probably be full before I say jack. Yeah. So right now I just want to rest. Um, one taxi guy was nice enough to take me through my whole trip. So I went outside and I got a taxi by the main road. Then he asked me where I was going. I told him I have one place to go. Then later on I told him I have other places to go. And I was like, okay, no problem that he can take me. So while I was in the supermarket, he waited for me. When I crossed the road to go and buy things, like the mini market they had outside the supermarket he also waited for me and then i ended up paying him 60 cities so 60 cities is about 4800 naira so sometimes i get really agitated when i hear the price for transportation here but i'm not so mad because petrol um here is more expensive i think they are buying it at over 600 like when you come back to the naira it's over 600 naira per liter so definitely transportation should be more expensive um so yeah that's pretty much what I did today, everything I bought at the supermarket was about 184. Well, let me just say 185 or 186 CDs in total. Yep, um, I don't know if I convert, I don't know how much that would be. My mind is not going there right now. But yeah, that's how much I spent at the supermarket. Then I spent um, five CDs on the ball fruit. It's actually ball fruits, not bon fruit, like I was saying before, like B O then fruits, kind of. So bon fruits, but there's a way to pronounce it that I'm not getting it here. Um, so that's just what I spent today. Um, so yeah, I'm still in Cape Coast, so I'll see you guys probably later this evening when I'm done cooking. I'm not going to vlog myself cooking because honestly, <laughs> if you want to see cooking videos, go and watch the CME. Thank you, God bless. <laughs> yeah.